Hello everyone, now I will show you how to set up a TP-Link router. EX220 And before I start, I want to remind you, that if my video will help you, you can buy me a coffee. Half of all coffees I send to animal shelters. All details are in the description down below. The first thing you need to do is turn on the router. Take the power adapter. Plug one end into an outlet and the other into the router. On some models, you need to press the power button. When the router turns on, the indicator will light up. Then connect the cable from your broadband provider to a special port. This port is usually signed as one or internet, and usually it has a different color. Each cable should be inserted until it clicks. Next, insert one end of the ethernet cable that comes with the router into one of the LAN ports. and plug the other end into the ethernet card of your computer or laptop. Great, we connected the router to your computer. Now you need to set it up. But first, I will show you another method how you can connect the router if you do not have an ethernet cable or your computer does not have an ethernet port. All you need to do is connect the router with the power adapter and the cable of your internet provider. When you do this, your router will immediately distribute Wi-Fi, but the internet will not be available. If the router is new and has never been configured, the Wi-Fi network will be with the name of your router. The router name and Wi-Fi password are printed on the sticker that is located on the router. These credentials are different for each router. Connect to it. Great, you have connected to the router, now let's proceed to its configuration. First, open your browser and go to the URL that you see on the screen. Use the address bar, not the search bar. If the link doesn't open, or you see a page with a password that you don't know, it means that your router has already been configured, and you need to reset it to factory settings. Press the special reset button on the router for 5 to 10 seconds. The indicators on the router will blink. Usually this button is inside the router case to prevent it from being accidentally pressed. In this case, press it with a thin object. The router will reboot and the settings will be reset to factory defaults. Then you can try to enter the router settings panel again. If your router settings panel looks not like mine, it means that your router has a different version of firmware. I recorded a video for each type of firmware. All links are in the description down below. So, first of all, you need to create a username and password for your personal account. Some firmware versions don't have this form, but if it appears, fill in all details and memorize them. Or better write them down somewhere, they will be needed the next time when you log into your personal account. First of all, run the quick setup to manually configure your internet connection and wireless settings. I should also warn you that depending on the firmware version, you may not have some setup steps or they will be in the wrong order. Trust me, you got this. Just watch the video and follow instructions. On the first screen, select your time zone. If you don't remember which one you have, select any, and click Next. On the next page, select the type of internet connection. Usually it is specified in the contract with your broadband provider. If you don't know, you can try to click on the Auto Detect button. The router will try to identify what type you have. 
If it has failed, select Dynamic IP and click Next. Depending on what type of connection you have chosen in the previous step, this page may differ from mine. If you have selected Dynamic IP, then choose one of the options on this page. If your ISP only allows internet access to a specific MAC address, you need to clone the MAC address of the primary computer. If you are not sure, select Do Not Clone MAC Address. In most of the cases, there is no need to clone the MAC address. But if you can't get the internet connection after quick setup, please run it again and clone the MAC address for a try. On next page, set name and password of your future Wi-Fi network. You can enable the available modes of your router. There will be one or more modes available. If there are several, enable them and enter for each network the name and password of your future Wi-Fi network. Password must be at least eight characters long. When you write the credentials, click on the next button. On the next page, you will see all the information that you specified earlier. Click the Save button and wait until the settings are saved. On this page, you can configure TP-Link Cloud Service. Do not touch anything here. Just click the Login Later button. Great! You have completed the quick setup process. Click Finish and after a couple of minutes check internet connection. Just Google something. If there is no internet, then try to reboot your router. Press the Reboot icon in the upper right corner. After rebooting, wait a couple more minutes. Maybe the settings are applied and the internet will appear. If the internet still does not appear, check again whether you have connected all the cables correctly. If after all manipulations you still have no internet, then go to the Basic tab. Then select Internet. And then clone MAC address. After that, save the settings. Reboot your router and after a couple of minutes check internet connection. If internet still doesn't appear, contact your internet service provider. He will tell you what type of connection you have and what other settings you need to do. That's all. If my video was useful, please support my work. You can buy me a coffee. I donate 50% of all coffee's purchases to animal shelters. Details can be found in the description below.